Okay, so apologies, I've got a slightly sore throat, but um, we shall crack on. So, um, yeah, the last video, we got this prepped um, and kind of towards ready to come out. Um, what we need to do next is get all this um, wiring sort of untangled. Basically, this wiring loom that goes all over the whole stack and then comes over here and connects to various things. We've got to get that all undone and then just um, that stays with the stack and then the stack comes out basically. So we're gonna do that next um, and then strip it down and see what we've got. And um, I was chatting to the owner um, and uh, he said it did actually break down. I had it in my head that it never broken down, but it did break down once, went to Renault, they gave it a software update. Didn't break down since, but then I think, um, cause of the noise it was making, the owner didn't really want to drive it too much. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll give this motor a good check over anyway, but um, that just means we need to sort of pay particular attention to that area around the rotor position sensor. And um, we've got to take that all apart anyway to rebuild the motor. Um, but yeah, it's quite a long job. So you just want to be sure when you're doing this that um, it's going to be reliable because it takes a long time to do and we want the car to be reliable so yeah and um, we shall see what happens see if this is good to rebuild um, or if we need to put another motor in it I have got a motor available um, and that is plan B but I'm hoping that's not going to be needed so we shall see I'll crack on and I'll catch you in a bit all right cool cheers right so we are about ready to get this stack out and um, we've actually decided to do the wiring slightly differently. Um, so the Renault powertrain removal instructions, um, so that loom that fits around the motor stack and connects to various points, basically you disconnect, disconnect that from all those various points and then you bring it out with the stack. And when I did the ZE50, um, the white one, it had, um, it was a little bit more complicated because it's got CCS and there's additional wires going up and over and additional ECU and it's really hard to get the BMS cable out that runs um, through here, clips on here, um, down and to the battery. And so I left the loom on the car, disconnected it from the stack and left it connected to the car. And I've sort of done that with this one. Um, I, you still have to take it off a few points around the 12 volt battery just for access purposes, but um, yeah, just trying it that way to see if it makes it slightly easier. To be honest, it doesn't It doesn't take that long to take all of these bits off. You have to take some of them off anyway. But just interesting, when you do things kind of time and again, you just sort of see different ways. And we'll give that a try. And you, it, it, it makes it slightly handier because the engine crane's not going to be kind of, you know, like the strap's not going to be, the loom's not going to be in the way of the strap. Um, but you've got to obviously make sure we don't bend that too much, keep it clean, all that kind of stuff. And the water pump is still on it. So um, I've just put that on top of the disc because we don't want that pulling that. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm just about to pull the stack in and I'll get that out. You know you're getting somewhere when um, when you can do that. There's not a lot holding it in. So literally that is just held in by the three bolts on that mounting there. Um, and then that one over there, I've undone the sort of dog bone. There's a mounting at the back, um, which is that one. And it just goes in that black bracket. So um, yeah, we shall get this off. Um, the car has been sitting around for quite a while and you can kind of feel that as you're doing it. Some of the bolts sort of don't really want to come off and stuff, but um, we are getting there. We shall see how it goes and uh, yeah, get this one there. Uh, get this one apart and see what's going on. And, all right, catch you in a bit. Cheers. Okay, so this is out. Fantastic. So that wasn't too bad. Um, some of the bolts are a bit more stiff than they have been on other Zoe's, but actually the owner said the car's been sat for a long time. Um, just sort of working out what they're going to do with it. So um, yeah, this is pretty good. It's on the floor and um, we're going to start stripping it down. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the reduction gear off, um, off this end, and then we can inspect that motor shaft. That's where the position sensor is. And I've seen various issues at that end with the position sensor, and that's absolutely crucial. If you have an issue there, then we're kind of increasing the likelihood that we're going to need a replacement motor. Um, but we'll look over it all. We need to take this, uh, what's called the PEC, the control box off the back. Um, and you've got to take the aircon compressor off to do that. So, yeah, I'm going to do that stripped down and then we'll see where we are. All right, cool. Okay, so we've got this reduction gear off. Um, let's give this a spin so you can hear it. Yeah, it sounds. Sounds pretty bad. So that's obviously what's making the noise. 
um, when you take these off, and this one really didn't want to come off. So you see this aluminium corrosion here. This one's got quite a lot um, sort of around these surfaces holding it together. I mean, you can see on here, it's like sand, the amount of corrosion. Um, and it's all just kind of washing off here. Um, but yeah, nice bit of aluminium. Um, so yeah, that does sound pretty terrible. The trying to sort of wiggle the shaft, and so one of the things that can happen is the bearing can sort of lock up um, and it can then rotate, so like the, the outer race rotates as well, the whole bearing rotates, um, and then it kind of scores out the housing and then this shaft can move. Because if you look in here, um, that's fine and good. So those coils, you can see that's the rotor position sensor. So this and then those coils in there are the rotor position sensor. And then if we can get a shot, not the easiest to get the light in there, but if we do that, try and get it to focus as well. Um, where are we gonna go? If we come up here, so if you can see that, there you go, you can see that at the bottom there. So that lobed ring rotates. There you go, and you can see that's moving in and out. If I go, oh, there we go. So that's the position sensor and its ring. So the position sensor sort of um, effectively sends a signal and then that gets reflected back magnetically by that ring. Um, and then obviously as that moves in and out, um, uh, yeah, the, um, the motor controller can tell the position of the motor. So that's how the position sensor works. Kind of cool, that sensor has got quite a lot of surface rust on it. The ring, sorry, it's in the middle of the sensor. Try and get that to focus. There you can see that surface corrosion that the old phone can't quite cope there with the, oh, there you go. You can see that corrosion's quite bad. So, yeah, I think um, so far so good. It does sound, um, it does sound terrible. Now it's not going to focus properly because I just focused in one place. Um, there we go. Yeah, it does sound bad. Um, that position sensor, the inside's quite corroded. It doesn't look like that's moved. It's, it is a bit of a concern that it did break down with the rotor position sensor. Um, but there is a bit of corrosion on there. Maybe there's a bit of movement in the bearing. Maybe that's enough to cause that position error. Um, one of the things we check for is wear on this shaft. Let me just get that to focus. There we go. So you can see there's a shiny bit starting just there. So that's the bit that's in contact with the, the, um, the reduction gear. And you can see that it's made it slightly more, slightly more shiny there. Um, so, but if we look, um, if we look sort of from here, down that shaft, so you can see it's pushed in a little bit, but it's not significant. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And I'm happy with that so far. I think we're gonna um, continue, see if it's rebuildable. Um, so I need to get the rest of this off. I'm just quite keen to have a look at that. Um, I'll strip the rest of this down, have a look at the back of the motor. It's got a brush box because it's a separately excited AC motor. Um, it's magnetless and we'll see what happens there. So yeah, taking that off was quite um, interesting because it, it was, really stuck on there it's got like um these steel locating plugs um, and that is still in aluminium and they just get corroded and all this is corroded together so it starts to move but it's just really tight and you can't you can't just smash it with a hammer you've just got to be really careful and give it some gentle taps one side and another side wiggle it by hand you just got to take it off carefully then as it starts to come off you've got to keep going straight because um, there's a rubber and a fibre seal on here. Um, and if you scuff that, then it's not going to seal. Um, and there's oil on the other side of that, um, on the other side of that seal. So just inside there, where the sort of inner splines are there, there's oil in there. So effectively, this bit of the shaft is in oil, and then there's a seal around there. So if you scuff that, then you've got to replace that, and that's, uh, that's not easy. Um, so, yeah, I'll continue stripping this down. I'll have a look at the other end. But yeah, I think so far so good yeah all right cool catch you later okay so we're fully apart now so we've got the pec off this back end of the motor um and i've taken the brushes off as well so this is um yeah magnetless it is an ac motor but separately excited yeah they're not too bad those um 
but yeah, probably about 80% still there, something like that. Um, there was quite a bit of brush material in here, but kind of, oh, they're kind of normal really. And these slip rings look okay. Is that focusing? No, I don't know. There we go. Yeah, these look okay. I've seen issues with um, where these can be lipped or kind of worn. But that looks fine, so nothing too much of concern there. Some of the casting in here is pretty wonderful. Um, but yeah, kind of average Renault, really. Quite a lot of corrosion on this motor. Some aluminium corrosion. I've been hoovering it out of here. Um, but yeah, I think this car's just been sitting around for a while. So I think this motor can be rebuilt. Um, what I'm going to just do is just spin it quite quickly. We know that end's noisy. I just wanted to listen to this end as well. Um, and then see what... Uh, see what we can hear so let's do that give us a bit more of an indication all right <laughs> well, as i said it's pretty terrible isn't it i think that's actually both bearings that are making a noise so i would say that we can rebuild this so one of the biggest issues as i was saying is sort of movement with this shaft and now it's all apart. I can sort of put my foot on it to steady it and just give that shaft a good wobble. We're just trying to find out if there's any kind of movement sideways up and down because um, that causes that issue with that sensor. Um, and it looks okay, um, as well as that seal I was mentioning, this, which I've now put a bag in, but to keep the dust out. But that seal, which goes round, just, oh, come on, focus. See that, the, the larger line to the left. Um, it's where that those, that seal goes. Um, and yeah, you can get corrosion in there. There is a little bit in there, but it's not affecting that, um, where that seal is, so that's fine. This isn't discolored or worn particularly. So this is kind of normal where they have the sort of tapered um, splines on there. So yeah, this looks looks okay to me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty good news really. So um, the next job is gonna be obviously get this apart fit the bearings we've gone blurry again come on there we go um yeah strip this down get the bearings in um and just make sure we're still happy with everything when we get that apart but i think so far so good so we know this is broken down with an issue with that sensor but i think this because the bearings are just quite bad um i think this is just likely going to be bearing movement bearing heat that kind of thing there is quite a bit of corrosion on that on that ring but yeah i've got those so we can uh yeah, we can sort this out. So it's definitely going to need that inner ring um, that goes in there. Um, that's a sort of separate bit. When you take all of this off, this cone off, there's the ring inside there comes out and then this sensor is separate. So we'll have a look at that sensor, see what that looks like. Definitely replace that ring. Um, we'll swap the brushes because there's a reasonable amount of wear there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. So, all right, I hope that's interesting. But uh, yeah, it's good we're actually getting somewhere. So yeah, good stuff. All right, catch you later.